Welcome to Instagram Live. I'm here to talk about facial plastic surgery. My name is Dr. Steven Perlman. I'm dual board certified in facial plastic and reconstructive surgery. I specialize in rhinoplasty, revision rhinoplasty, facelifts, blepharoplasty, brow lifts, and all kinds of anti-aging measures. Um, so the main topic today we're going to talk about is deep plane facelift. What is the hype about deep plane facelift? Deep plane facelift has been around since probably the early 80s. Uh, Sam Hamra popularized it with the composite facelift and doctors such as Frank Kamer, who I learned it from in the late 80s, uh, perfected it. What this is, is deep plane facelift lifts up a full flap of skin and muscle together. That gives you a better pull. So what is it? Let's start with a simple smash lift. Simple smash lift, which I learned when I was a resident back in the late 80s was we do a, an incision around the ear, inside the tragus, around back here. We lift, we lift it up the skin all the way around to here. Then the muscle underneath called the smash muscle. That's the muscle that's like in the neck, it's the patisma, and it continues up into the cheek as the, as the smash. So uh, yes, we will be saving this on our page. Uh, so um, we then, cut this muscle called the smash back here in front of the ear. We lift it up for an inch or two. We would stitch it back. We'd pull the skin back, cut it, go home happy with ourselves. But what happens is we have ligaments, the masseterical ligament here, the zygomatic ligament, and the mandibular ligament. These three ligaments go from the skin to the muscle to the bone. If you separate under the muscle for a longer distance, which the deep plane facelift does, you can slide up the skin and muscle as a composite, as a full flap. We have a nice thick flap. You get a better gliding. You can pull the muscle much tight, more tightly than this trim and skin and trim and, uh, and so, so the skin down without tension. So it's a more aggressive lift because we've lifted up under the muscle, but leave the skin attached. Now, why that's important. There's some people who do, um, something called a biplane or facelift and say, oh, we're lifting up in the deep plane. They lift up under the skin and then under the muscle. So to leave the, the mass separate. The problem is that when you separate the skin and the muscle, first of all, it can affect the blood supply. Second of all, you have these fine fibers that go from the skin to the muscle that help to hold it up and keeps a better pull and a better result. So people say, gee, well, won't you look more aggressive? Won't it look like one of those pulled ladies that you see walking down Park Avenue if you live in New York City like we do that look like you know look scary like wind blown well what happens is either they're on their fourth facelift by their 60s or their surgeon didn't do a deep plane because if you leave the ligament attached in these three places and all you do is pull the muscle a little bit and you try to pull the skin extra tight you get that sweep because it's fixed and that gives you the Nike swoosh. If you separate that nice thick flap of skin and muscle and pull it up together, then you're gonna get a much better lift. Also, we enter the muscle further forward. You see back here, it's pretty tight, it doesn't move. Here, it's much more loose. So if you're lifting up where it's loose, you get a much better pull. When, I, when I'm teaching residents and fellows, and I do a surgery, no one else is watching your surgery. I mean, they're watching, no one else is doing a surgery, I'm, I'm doing it. When I first cut the muscle, lifted it, this mass, and I lift it up an inch like a standard smash lift, you get a little bit of pull. Lift a little further, a little more pull. And all of a sudden, when I do the full release under here, I could take this and move it all the way back to the ear. So I've, I've asked a couple of questions here. Uh, well, one of the questions is, uh, yes, we'll be saving this. Um, then questions, can you chin fill or master both an underage person? That's really a, uh, depends on, 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 you have to come in with your parent, have a long conversation. Um, loose face and neck, again, there, there's a lot of loose face and neck. Sometimes we do some in their late 30s to 40s, very unusual, but normal people start in their early 50s on up. And Who's a good candidate for this facelift procedure? Well, when I was a, when I was a fellow, I was a fellow back in, in the late 80s, my 
fellowship director said, when is someone ready for a facelift? When they do this, they like the way it looks, they're willing to put up with the expense, the downtime and the healing, they're ready for a facelift. We have less invasive procedures we can do as well. We have face tight, which heats up the muscle underneath along the jawline with tiny incisions, much faster healing. And my Elevate, which treats neck bands, I'll, I'm probably a candidate for that pretty soon. And that will tighten our neck. We combine them, we can get 40% result of facelift. So if you want really put up with 40% less invasive, we do those. But if you want to go for the home run, go for the best, you do a deep, plain facelift. Other procedures, a mini lift. What is a mini lift? There are so many different definitions of what a mini lift is. A mini lift is whatever the surgeon calls a mini lift. Some people, it's the short flap. Dan Baker, an uh, excellent, superb surgeon, one of the best ever facelift surgeons, he does something, he devised something called a short flap where the incision is, is just around and on back of the ear. He skips this part, this part, but he can, he'll do a very aggressive SMAS procedure, even with his short flap. To me, a mini lift is when you lift the skin up a significant distance. We do the old fashioned SMAS incision, a couple stitches in this SMAS, either overlapping it, called uh, imbricating it, actually called placating it, or we cut and elevate it for an inch or two. That's, it's faster, it's easier, faster healing, and it may look pretty close to the same for the first year or two, but it's not last as long. So it's a faster procedure, it's faster healing, it's good for maybe someone in their late 40s to early 50s that just needs a little bit of jawline tightening, and this is their own issue, the jawline, maybe a little neck. But when you wanna get a more long-lasting result for significantly drooping cheeks and faces, you need a deep plane. Another good thing a deep plane does is that the standard SMAS lift dresses the jawline and the neck. It does nothing for the cheek. So doctors who do the SMAS lift don't think you have to do a deep plane. What are they doing? They're injecting fat into the cheeks. So they're squirting fat in cheeks to make their face lifts look better. That's pretty good, except the problem with fat is you retain anywhere between 40 to 60, 70% of the fat. So if you retain only 35 to 40%, you need to put in more. If you retain 70% and you thought you'd only retain 50, it may be too big also, it may fluctuate with weight gain and weight loss. So again, also if someone has big chubby cheeks already, it's not gonna help. So for example, if you look at my face, I have, this cheekbone is now naked because this used to live right up here. And I'll see patients who come in, you have hill, valley, hill, valley. And so this hill used to live up and deep plain by separating the whole cheek with this is called the malar fat pad. Again, this is the malar area, yet here it lives on someone my age. By doing the deep plane, it'll pull it back up and stick it where it used to live. So again, deep plane will add the cheek along the jawline and neck, already getting a superior result and a superior elevation. So I have a question about uh, what is the recovery time? Well, with a deep plane facelift, you could be back functioning with, uh, you know, with friends, with work, with, with, with you know, cover makeup uh, at about week and a half is pushing it, I say two weeks. Two weeks dinner with family and friends, three weeks most functions. If you're going to be going to a charity ball, I, I'd like to, I'd like to wait a month. If your daughter's getting married, I want three months, at least, because not that it takes three months to heal, but we want everything's perfect. Sometimes someone may have, you know, a little, little collection of blood underneath, which is one of the risks of facelift. May have a little more black and blue. Uh, maybe one of the stitches pulled, we need to wait for that to heal better. Again, unusual things, only minor, minor things, but if it's your daughter's wedding, you gotta look perfect for that. Um, we, they've asked, what can patients do at home to ensure the best results? We put all our patients on Arnica Montana preoperatively, helps reduce black and blue, better nutrition, uh, vitamin C, not multivitamin, multi, a single multivitamin is good, but mega vitamins can cause bleeding. 
Uh, if, you, if you have high blood pressure, you gotta control your blood pressure. Because the number one cause of having blood collect under the skin called hematoma post-op is high blood pressure. Also, smoking. Smoking is horrible. It robs the skin of blood supply. It's not just bad for the lungs. It's not just bad for creating cancer, but, but smoking causes wrinkles. It also robs the skin of blood supply, so it ages faster. But also, when you're healing, if there's poor blood supply, you have a higher chance of losing skin in back of the ear, sometimes in front of the ear, called necrosis. And this is much more common also in smokers. And we have someone all of a sudden see the skin looks, looks kind of dusky, who swear that they stopped smoking all of a sudden. Well, I, I snuck a few cigarettes because I was home and I was healing and I was nervous. Um, the question is, uh, can I get a mini lay facelift? What is that? We discussed mini facelift. Um, let's, is the facelift permanent? Well, the obnoxious answer is someone asked me, how long is the facelift gonna last? It's gonna last for the rest of your life. How is that possible? Because if you have a facelift, deep plane of course, which is preferable in most, and you have a twin sister, you're gonna look 15 years younger. In 10 years, you're still gonna look 15 years younger. You're gonna age, and no, we can't stop aging, but when you're in your 50s, the results, the results should last about 10 years. In your 60s, about eight years, and 70s, about six years, because you get less and less um, uh, elasticity. So again, we asked questions about the my elevator mentioned for the neck. Uh, they've had results, people are showing their results last as long as three years. That's about how long it's been in common use. I've been had, I've had the my elevator procedure I've been doing since about last, last winter. And you know, it's a good result. It's your 50%. It's not the home run, but it's a couple small stab incisions, back to work faster than a facelift, neck lift. That's what we do if people aren't ready for a facelift. Um, the question is, does filler make a difference? Filler doesn't really affect the results of facelift. You have a huge amount of filler in your face and it eventually goes away. It makes harder to dissect if you have some of these. Sometimes uh, if you use something like sculpture, it can cause some scarring, a uh, radius. But um, what we find is that, um, you know, try not to go overboard in the filler before your facelift. We see the planes better, dissection is easier. And in the long run, we want to see, you don't want to see what we're working on. Well, again, we've, we've gone about a little over. We said we're gonna be on for 15 minutes. Actually, we actually started three minutes late, so about right about the 15 minutes now. Uh, just any other questions coming? Okay, so we have um, uh, another question about, um, you know, the mini lift is that, you know, we did discuss mini lifts, but I actually have a colleague, I can't mention his name, excellent surgeon, and he'll have someone, you know, sometimes people think, you say, all I want is a mini lift because that's either they think it's gonna cost less or they only think they want a little procedure that's safer. The facelift is very safe. And, and um, what he does, he actually says, I'll tell a patient, sure, it's, it's a mini lift. I charge them the same as a regular facelift. And they do a regular facelift. They wanna call it a mini lift, it's a mini lift. I like to tell patients what they're getting, but there really is no increased risk. In studies uh, showing the, uh, the complication rates of deep plane facelift to standard mass facelifts shows there's no increased incidence of permanent complications. You may have a 2% temporary weakness of the upper lower lip, smiles kind of funny for a few weeks, but in the long run, the risks are no, not increased with your deep plane facelift. And of course, what else can we add to deep plane facelift? Very commonly, we wanna add a brow lift. Now, I've got friends, someone, one friend calls it a, a temper lift. No one calls it a galial advancement because brow lift gives people the idea that they're gonna look like this. A brow lift should lift up more on the side than the middle because if you're doing a facelift and you have, you have a lot of laxity, we have to feel the face. If your face is very loose and mine's getting pretty loose, so if you have a lot of laxity and you pull it up this way, no matter how well you stitch it down here, you may have some bunching. But if you do a, a, a brow lift, Again, more in women than men. If you do a brow lift, that will help take away that bunching and accordion look next to the eye. And very often women need it. In men, what we'll do the way we get around it is if, if men have, have significant laxity to need that vertical part here, we'll actually can extend the incision through their sideburn 
and even to a bit of a crease, which you can't go there in women, but in men you can because it's covered by hair and, and thicker skin. Um, of course, you know, the other th things we can do is blepharoplasty, upper and lower eyelids, lip lift. That's great because I, very many people who, who come into facelifts, the face sags, the brow sags, the eye sags, the upper lip sags. When you smile, you don't, you don't see their, all their teeth at rest. Now you see a little bit of my teeth, but many people, especially women, this distance significantly increases. So we'll combine a lip lift with the facelift. And again, if you have hooding on the sides, corner lip lift, or if the mouth is downturned, we can modify the corner lip lift to even out the corner of the lips so they don't turn down as much. Because right now you, you want, you want you have drooping cheeks, drooping jawline, drooping neck. You don't want a drooping mouth too. We want to fix it all. Well, I want to thank you for joining me. Uh, we've now hit our, tw our, our, our 20 minute point and uh, we're going to start to do it on a regular basis. We'll be posting uh, sort of a more regular schedule as we're getting into it. And uh, feel free to send us, send us an, I, a message. Oh, and by the way, don't forget, our Cyber Monday special is starting, of course, Cyber Monday. I'm not even working that day because they're so busy. Um, we're, we're, it's all our minimally invasive procedures are going to be on specials. Stay tuned to our Instagram posts, Facebook posts, look for our email blasts, or call the office and ask. Uh, we have two fabulous, we have an NP, nurse practitioner, and a PA who were both superb. Lisa came from Florida, from, from Texas. She came highly recommended, we're working in a great place. We were thrilled to get her. And more recently, Leanne uh, came up from North Carolina uh, with her husband was transferred to, um, to, to Wall Street. And her laser rep from down south, unsolicited, called our laser rep and said, you got the best laser nurse in my entire territory. So they're great at lasers, fillers, toxins, Botox, any minimally invasive, you'll find it here. And again, thanks for joining me.